What's up guys, today of course following th the tradition of previous Battlefield games, today I'm going to be bringing you my sniping tutorial for Battlefield 1. I know some people will probably question if you need a tutorial because sniping is quite easy in this game inside of 200 meters with the fast bullet velocities and the one hit kill range on most sniper rifles, but you got to keep in mind not everyone's been sniping in the Battlefield series. Lots of people are coming over from other FPS games. This is brand new. They could use all the tips they get. So this is more, of course, catered toward uh, beginner to intermediate. And it's going to have some advanced tips scattered in as we go. There's lots to know. There's lots to learn. Why don't you just sit down and enjoy? Let's get started. To get the obvious out of the way, no matter what style you take from aggressive to passive sniping, you should be spotting everything you see. That's the Q key on PC. R1 on PS4, and RB on Xbox One, right bumper. Simply aim at the enemy and hit that button. That's it. You'll see an icon go over their heads and an icon on the minimap. You've just massively helped yourself and the team in just that little button click. Spot enemy snipers, other infantry, planes, tanks, objectives. If you're the squad leader for extra points for you and your team, you just spot everything. Even if you're not the best sniper, spotting will help your team more than they'll ever know and it'll help you rank up faster through spotting bonuses, squad leader bonuses to get better weapons and gear for your class. Keep that in mind. Next, so let's set up your kit for best effectiveness. I'll start with a brief rifle breakdown before I get into the equipment that helps you best. I try, Me personally, I try to get a more hybrid style of sniping. Like a lot of people make you choose between, oh, are you an aggressive sniper or are you a more passive sniper? And I completely throw that logic out the window. Uh, because sometimes I'll transition from aggressive to more passive of 50 to 100 meters away in passive and then right in your face with aggressive and I'll transition sometimes multiple times a match. So I, I try to find a weapon and equipment that allows me to be extremely versatile as I change that skill set up multiple times per match. So again, choose what you feel will best represent your style if you want to be an exclusively aggressive sniper choose that. I'll touch on that and I'll make a separate tutorial for aggressive sniping later. Uh, but if you want to play passive too, choose a, a weapon that's going to be better for say 100 meters away. And I'll get to that. In Battlefield 1, all sniper rifles are one hit weapon or one hit kill weapons on headshots. But new to Battlefield 1, each of them has a sweet spot or a certain range where landing a body shot chest and above will lead to a one hit kill all have multiple variants. When you see the term rifleman with a rifle, it simply means the weapon doesn't have a scope. It's a regular sniper rifle with iron sights. It's better probably for some forms of aggressive sniping. If you see the sharpshooter variant, it means it, it doesn't have a bipod and it has a short range optic, so probably five, six times, but that can also be customized. Lastly, if you see the sniper or marksman variant, it means that the weapon comes with a bipod and a longer range scope, so probably 8 to times magnification. 8 to 10 times magnification, I should say. You can decide from that which style you'll want, but bear in mind each can be customized if you really want a certain loadout. In terms of my favorites, they go as follows. Uh, I'll have reviews on these shortly if I haven't already put them up, so if you want reviews and breakdowns on these individual weapons, you can have a look at those as well or you will once I upload them. First is uh, the Gewehr 98 Sniper. It's probably my favorite sniper rifle in the game. I equip the five or six times sight on this and I just go nuts. Uh, it's a one hit kill range at 80 to 120 meters, fast bolt cycling speed and very fast bullet velocity. Very few weaknesses, although it does have a slow fire rate and it's strong but maybe not the best when it comes to aggressive and more passive sniping. If you had to make me choose a weapon, this would probably be the one I'd choose for just jack-of-all-trades style sniping. It, it really doesn't have a, like a really bad weakness unless you consider a slow fire rate a weakness, but if you're hitting headshots and chest shots in close range combined with your sidearm, it's not a huge weakness. Next is the Gewehr M95 Sharpshooter. I say statistically this is probably my favorite sniper rifle in the game. It do, uh, for aggressive sniping that is. It doesn't have a one hit kill range. It tops out at 90 damage at any range. But it has an extremely fast fire rate. An extremely fast bolt cycling speed. And reload speed. 
It doesn't have a super fast bullet velocity, but since you won't be taking this weapon out in farther ranges, it doesn't matter. It's very good in close quarters engagement sniping. Next is the SMLE Mark III Marksman. It's a favorite of the community and definite jack of all trades weapon that has a one hit kill range of about 40 to 80 meters. It has the largest magazine size of 10 of all the rifles and is a very middle of the road weapon it's statistically in terms of bullet velocity, reload speed, etc. So again, it, it gets beat out in pretty much every other category by some other weapon, but it's not weak in any other category in any category so again jack of all trades master of none uh, and next is the m1903 sniper it's most similar to the gewehr 98 with the one hit kill range of about 100 to 140 meters and it's best suited for longer range sniping and it has good bullet velocity associated with it as well so again this or the 98 would probably be my favorite for regular sniping that can transition between long and short range quickly. It's versatility. For you, again, I'd suggest picking based a uh, rifle based on the situations you plan on playing in. So maybe the M95 if you plan on playing as an aggressive sniper, and maybe the Gewehr 98 if you plan on playing anywhere between medium to long and sometimes short. Go to Simtic, evaluate the stats, try them out. If you don't like the feel of the weapon and don't think that practice will make you feel better about the weapon over time, don't use it. Pick another one. Pick one you're comfortable with or you're not going to find success no matter how good the stats tell you they are. Next is attachments. In terms of attachments, you have the option of choosing a bipod for some of the variants. In Battlefield 4, there was of course the bipod versus the straight pull bait, pull bolt debate that was always brought up, but that won't be the case. There is no straight pull bolt in Battlefield 1. You don't have the choice of quick scoping or scoping versus unscoping. You will have to unscope for every shot. In terms of sidearms, which are definitely your best friend and I'll cover with cover more in a bit, especially as an aggressive sniper, I really actually like the standard M1911. Of course, since the game's relatively new, I'm still exploring options in sidearms, uh, but the M1911 offers a good high damage, quick fire rate, and acceptable amount of recoil. But in terms of archetypes for sidearms, I do tend to like the 44 Magnum types of the one or two shot kills, uh, and you're rewarded for accuracy and penalized for extreme inaccuracy versus the spray and praise. Uh, so that would be my choice, M1911 or something harder hitting. In terms of equipment, I really like the spotting flare as my first choice. You get two flares, they linger around for a while, and they highlight enemies in a pretty large radius that I estimate is probably around 20 to 25 meters, if I'm not mistaken. And since they can be fired from uh, the gun, it's basically as close to an MAV as possible in this game. You don't even need to be in the area to plant one. Just shoot it toward an objective downrange, say 100 meters, and everything in that range will be highlighted. So this not only helps you, but it helps your team immensely in the process. My second choice is uh, I'm sort of experimenting with it as I go again too, but so far I think I've settled on the spotting scope. As I've done in a previous video, it can act as both a rangefinder and a periscope, so whether you're playing aggressive or passive, it gives you the option of looking above the trenches toward possible threats down range, uh, or judging a range past 250 meters and you really want to dial in that first accurate shot. Be aware though, it does give off a glint, so fellow snipers may, as much as they might not be able to hit you because it gives off the glint but they won't see your body, they'll definitely know you're there. So they might just wait for you to peek up and then pop you. You can use other forms of equipment as well too. You can use um, the sniper shield, but I think it makes you more of a sitting duck. It's only good to maybe help your team in specific circumstances. And you can also use uh, the decoy, which is the one where it like puts your a fake head above off the trenches but a lot of the time if you expose like the actual handle uh, underneath the head uh, a good sniper will be like oh it's clearly a decoy and they just won't shoot at it and it's kind of a waste so again pick your moments pick your battles maybe it'll come in handy in certain circumstances but I, I, I would much rather choose the periscope and the spotting scope as uh, or the flare the spotting scope and the flare is probably my two choices on the regular now, in terms of grenades, I like the gas grenades playing ag aggressively because it means I can gas an MCOM to flush people out 
or keep people away from them while picking them off. And you can also use the incendiary, incendiary grenade for the same, the same reason. The, the reason why I like the gas grenades though is you get two of them, which means you can help stagger out the timing. So say you throw a, gra a gas grenade and they put on their masks and you're like, great, that did nothing. You wait a couple seconds when they probably are prone to taking off their masks, throw it again when they're too busy putting their masks back on, your teammates have run and mow them down. So you can stagger them out. The incendiary ones, uh, they'll set fire to everything, but you only get one and, I mean, if, if they're clear out of that area, sometimes it might actually slow your advance because your incendiary grenade can catch you on fire too. So bear that in mind if you're playing a more aggressive style. Lastly, in terms of melee weapons, there isn't a ton of difference between them as a whole besides maybe just the, the speed at which you swing the melee and the animation. But look under the extras section. The buzzsaw icon allows you to cut through wood, meaning you can bust out shutters and buildings to give you a better vantage point, say through a window. Or you can use the barbed wire icon to cut through barbed wire on the ground, which of course is going to help you and your team if you're trying to advance in an area. Or if you're holding an area and there's barbed wire around and you don't like the idea of potentially stepping in barbed wire as you're hovering around, you can just cut it and not have to worry about it. It's completely out of your mind. Again, just choose whatever you want. It's not massive that you choose a melee weapon every single time you go into a round, but it, it, it doesn't help to have it doesn't hurt to have one that's versatile in terms of say or wood and barbed wire cutting. So finally, let's get to the advice. The first thing I would suggest is pick one weapon and one magnification at a time. For example, you might choose the SMLE Mark III Sharpshooter with a 5x scope. Get used to the bullet drop, get used to the recoil behavior, the bolt cycling speed, the reload speed, how that bullet behaves at different ranges, etc. If you start off with, say, a couple of rounds using this weapon and you're brand new to sniping and then you transition to a different weapon, you're going to have confusion and muscle memory in terms of bullet velocity, bullet drop, a new style of reload, bolt cycling speed, animations, etc. Once you get used to one weapon style and you see yourself really starting to, to excel and get more snipes, better overall rounds, then I think you can probably either try changing up the magnification if you're trying to experiment between short and medium and longer range sniping, and at that point, if you can transition between uh, magnifications on that same weapon and still continually have success, it means you've probably got the fundamentals of sniping down, and a weapon change won't be that much of a detriment to get used to. There's two exceptions to this, though, and I'll, br I'll briefly list them. The first one is, you might find that changing weapons, if you're planning on changing styles of snipings, or sniping, I should say, are better off for you. So say if you're choosing the Gewehr M98 or uh, the Gewehr 98 and you, you aren't a huge fan of aggressively sniping with it, try changing to the M95 variant of it and that might help you for aggressive sniping. So it's it's picking, it's matching the weapon with your style but also trying to build famili familiarity with one weapon at the same time. I hope I'm getting my point across there. Uh, and the second is like I alluded to earlier, if you really hate the feel of a weapon and you don't feel that practice is going to make you overcome this feeling, change weapons and find something new. So, like I said, statistics are fantastic, but if you're not familiar with that weapon or it just doesn't feel right and it's not a weapon that you feel you're going to get used to or enjoy, find one you will. Don't waste your time. So again, and if that's the case, hopefully that comes early in the learning process. Before I go on to the next point, you should probably know about the reload changes in Battlefield 1 though, and this is, I'll just briefly touch on this. I'll, I'll link a video in the description as I talked about this in, in, the, in the past, but I made a, pretty, a video that covers it pretty well, but I'll explain it briefly here. For bolt action weapons in Battlefield 1, there's two different types of reloads, and of course it's no different here for the most part. It's empty or with a round left in the chamber. Every time you reload a weapon, regardless of how many rounds you're adding, you will have a pre-reload time and a post-reload animation time uh, that differs per gun. So say we're going to take the Gewehr 98 for example. Uh, it has a 5 round magazine. 
if we take the empty if we empty the magazine we have a pre-reload time of 1.17 seconds and a post reload time of 0.4 seconds and it what's called a strip clip reload time of 1.5 seconds and there's five rounds per strip clip so from empty combine those times the gun takes 3.07 seconds to on to reload completely now if say we use three rounds of the five so we have two left in the in the magazine and we choose to reload again you're going to take the pre and post reload times of 1.57 seconds combined you're going to add a bridge delay of 0.2 seconds which is basically it, it's 0.2 seconds for the first bullet only and then 0.5 seconds for each additional bullet so say we have three rounds to load. You're going to have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 times 3. So in total, it's going to be 1.7 seconds plus the 1.5 seconds for the pre and post reload animation times. And you're going to get 3.27 seconds. So when you compare the two times of empty versus a few rounds left in the magazine, basically it's this, the too long didn't read version. It's faster to either completely empty the magazine or reload after a round or two. Next, sensitivity. You can practice this in game or an empty server. And sensitivity is quite subjective, which means of course what works for me might not work for you. But the obvious point is to find something that allows you to maintain accuracy as well as being utilitarian on the battlefield as a whole. And what I mean by that is I don't like switching sensitivities between when I go into a vehicle or when I switch kits. Uh, I just like the idea of building muscle memory on one sensitivity no matter what I'm doing in the battlefield. So finding one that makes me effective in whatever I choose is what I aim for. So far, I've found that around 17 sensitivity with 800 DPI on my mouse has worked quite well, and around 20% on console. Experiment with this when sniping and, and see if you can find success, and then if you're finding success sniping, see if you can duplicate that success in vehicles and when using other kits. And if you do, if you found the sense that sensitivity where you, it allows you to transition between doing whatever you need and finding success, congratulations. You're done with sensitivity. You found it. For most of the veterans, if you prefer to switch sensitivities, depending on what you're doing in the battlefield, do it. If you're brand new to battlefield and you're watching this video, I'd suggest starting with one sensitivity and transitioning from there. See if uh, you need to lower it if you're missing because of too quick... Uh, jerky animation movements or if you need to speed it up because you're just not moving uh, fast enough on twitch shots the third point map and situational awareness your mini map is key use it a lot I use it about 50% of the time I'm staring at the screen because it gives you so much so much information you can tell where the enemy is where they're facing how many they're gonna be potential certain death situations such as running into a vehicle uh, whether you're in proximity to objectives, where your teammates are for support, or whether or not they're pushing an objective. It gives you an idea of where the enemy will be and if they're going to be pushing, and where they probably will be anticipating attacking next. Be aware of hot spots and choke points on the layout of each map, or areas where that see lots of action each time you play. You can use this info to flank the enemy or provide extra to support for those teammates on the front lines. And going back, it really emphasizes the importance of using, say, the spotting uh, player and spotting itself hitting the Q key to really help your team out. Next, each time you shoot, you're going to be wanting, you're going to want to be stationary or not moving. When you move as you shoot, your bullet will have deviation. It won't go where the crosshairs tell you it should go. Each time I shoot a rifle, I basically automatically hold the steady weapon or hold breath button, which is basically left shift on PC, and I think it's clicking the left stick for the consoles. So when you sight a target, stop moving, uh, hit the steady weapon button, and shoot. Unless you're really close to the enemy, if you're within, say, 10 to 20 meters, you probably don't have to do this. Just shoot as fast as possible so the enemy doesn't uh, get the jump on you. If you get in this habit, especially beyond 50 plus meters, you'll completely eliminate any scope movement at all in your habits and your shots will get much more accurate, as well as movement too. Don't don't move when you shoot. In terms of how long, because I get this question a lot, how long should I stay scoped in when I'm actually scoping in? Uh, my advice is always just don't stay scoped in for very long. The longer you stay scoped in, 
The higher the chance the enemies will see that massive scope glint, which means that they'll be they'll be sp either spawning you like by clicking the button or spawning you as in <laughs> aiming down the scope and killing you. And it's a dead giveaway to other snipers. It's the fr it's actually the first thing I look for when I'm looking around a map. Is someone scoped in? Can I see that glint? And if so, pop headshot. Stay on scope to track general movement among the enemies crossing the battlefield too, because when you're scoped in, it sort of cuts your peripheral vision. There's a lot less to see, and it's easier to just track movement when you're not in the scope. Additionally, from a logistic standpoint, scoping in reduces the amount of enemies and targets you can see in spot, because again, you're only going to see what's in the scope. Your peripheral vision, like I said, is completely cut out of the equation. Lastly, again, it gives off the infamous scope blint, so... Uh, use it when you see an enemy, or if you aren't sure what it is, say you see something that looks suspicious, scope in. Even if it's a rock, who cares? You've cleared the idea out of the... You've cleared the idea that it's not an enemy out of your head, so that's fine. As mentioned earlier, your sidearm is your best friend. It will save you if you don't get a one-hit kill, especially in close range, so immediately after getting a hit marker, quick switch to it. Uh, you can also use it when traveling in an area where you might get surprised, and if you're new to aggressive recon and you don't trust your aim in close range, switch to your sidearm when running around in a close quarters urban environment. It's it's pretty much a necessity for aggressive sniping as well. Make sure you pick one you're comfortable with, not necessarily one that your buddy or your Uncle Bob told you to pick. I like the M1911 the most, uh, and like I said earlier, I prefer the two-hit kill high damage ones as well. Uh, you're penalized for missing, so don't miss, and it's extremely high damage. Never stay in one spot for too long, especially after getting kills. This one should be as basic knowledge as it gets, but you'd be surprised how many times that someone kills me, and then they don't relocate, and I just spawn back in, pop, they're dead. You can bet that the person you killed will be seeking revenge kills, and if they're smart, you'll either be spotted by them, or you'll be attacked from a different angle by them, or a teammate that... Uh, their teammate that decided to hunt you down after you were spotted. Even the best players count account, can't account for all angles at all times, so relocating after uh, getting a kill tends to alleviate this concern a bit. Cover is best because a sniper in the open is a dead sniper for the most part, so again, stay behind cover. When moving between locations, don't rush out. Look ahead, check for enemies, Look for an area with some cover, and then move. That way, if you're surprised by an enemy, the cover given to you will give you a fighting chance versus others. When you do actually decide to move, send your reticle toward the enemy if you believe that an enemy will challenge you, and do so around head or chest level. The logic behind this is to remove the time and amount that you have to remove the reticle to, actu to accurately aim and shoot the target. The faster you can get your scope onto the target, the more likely you are to, go, to win the gunfight. So if, uh, if you have fast reflexes and good quick twitch skill built up, in addition to having good intuition as to where the enemy, be and the enemy will be and planning ahead, you stand a very good chance of winning almost every gunfight you enter. With regard to positioning, I like to stay a bit back from the main battle itself. Even if you're playing aggressively, you don't have the firepower of other classes. Uh, so... I like the perimeters of the match and it, or the map, and I like to start out at about 50 meters away, and I might move in to attack uh, an objective, or I might move in to attack an area if, say, an MCOM station opens up because somebody gassed it. I might just charge in right after that, and the reason for this is to allow myself the ability to flank behind enemy lines, and as enemy lines often get tunnel vision and stare at the area with the most attention. You can pick them off from behind or from the sides this way. An enemy that doesn't know you're there gives you a massive advantage. When you're engaged in a duel or a firefight against someone who sees you, as opposed to a quick undetected kill, make sure you stay mobile. This means side strafing, back and forth strafing, crouch or standing movement between shots. The idea basically being that you're making yourself a much harder target, as even a bullet or two missing could mean that you win the match instead of him. If it's in close range, switching to a sidearm or perhaps melee charging an enemy may make more sense than rechambering around to shoot at the enemy. Make sure you don't develop a pattern to your strafing though because say for example you only move to the left between shots 
I promise that if you engage that player over time, he's going to figure out your pattern and you will be killed. Vary your patterns. Next, in the infamous words of Kenny Rogers, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. If you're in a bad spot, you're in a bad position, or you get first hit, or you get hit first in a sniper duel, don't try to re-engage the guy. Just fold. He'll have a better position. He'll know where you are. He'll be waiting for you to come out, and he'll require less ammo to kill you. Instead, what you should do is relocate and take cover until either your health regenerates and then reevaluate the situation, or just completely abandon that engagement and try and flank the guy. Or not. If he's got a superior position in a window and his teammates has covered his flank, or he has a number adva numbers advantage with teammates, just completely abandon that. There is nothing good that will come out of that for you. If he stays put and tries to hold down an area of where he thinks you are, you might be able to surprise him. He won't be anticipating you coming from the sides. So if you're in a bad spot, uh, or at least a disadvantage in terms of that firefight, relocate and be patient. You'll find yourself getting more kills and dying a lot less this way. With regard to bullet drop, of course, like I alluded to previously, you won't have to account for much inside of two to 300 meters because of the extraordinarily fast bullet velocities in this game. Past this range though, uh, aim the center of the crosshair slightly above the head of the enemy to account for the potential bullet drop. I'm debating making a video on this in the future with regard to long range sniping like I have in previous Battlefield games, accounting for bullet drop, but with the added drag coefficient added uh, and the velocities to balance this out past about 500 meters, uh, I've read on a couple of synth forums saying that it's too unpredictable and too unreliable about past 500 meters, especially because we don't have extreme magnification scopes anymore. So I'm debating that as of now. With regard to moving targets inside 200 meters, you will now have to account, or outside 200 meters, you'll now have to account for slight amounts of bullet drop on some weapons as well as leading the target. Bullet drag is, uh, is now a significant factor for long range. So longer range sniping uh, and leading targets is not a really viable consistent strategy. Luckily enough though, because of the faster bullet velocities inside of about 200 meters, you will not have to account for much at all in terms of leading the target. But the best way to do it is to, to do what's called trapping. Instead of trying to follow the target's exact speed and trajectory with your crosshairs, which is just, it's too difficult to consistently do, uh, which can be nearly impossible if someone's changing directions like bunny hopping and changing speeds. What you do is aim slightly ahead of where you think they're going to be and fire when he hits the center of your crosshairs. Uh, if it's at longer range, you might have to aim slightly higher and slightly ahead of the target because that way he'll be like going into your bullet. Obviously, it takes quite a bit of practice to get used to the timing of the character movement and the bullet progression and the idiosyncrasies of all the weapons and individual skills associated, but I find it the easiest way. The reason why I'm not going to go into a perfect tutorial describing exactly how to hit moving targets is, like I said earlier, it varies between weapons, it varies between elevations, it varies between levels, maps, uh, skill levels, uh, scope differences. So the, the basic general idea I'll show in the video uh, is to lead, the, like lead, uh, put the weapon ahead of the target uh, and estimate the general range, see if he's going to lead or run directly into the bullet and if it's within two the two to three hundred meters it's not that difficult beyond that it's it's a crapshoot the best of the best still are going to miss more shots than they're going to make but practice does help to get this process down a lot better next people swear by using the bipod and going prone to maximize accuracy but personally i've never been an advocate for it and i just can't get used to the idea of being a sitting duck being prone it makes me feel extremely vulnerable and yes, I've heard the argument that it, it minimizes surface area over longer distances, so it's less of a target for the opponent. But the thing is, I've never had a problem hitting headshots, even Battlefield 4 up to a thousand meters away. It's, it, I always aim for headshots anyway, so if you only have your head exposed, it doesn't really make a difference to me. Uh, I've never felt the need to use the bipod. I, I just don't like it. If it's good for you, or you're brand new to sniping, experiment with it. See if it works for you. For me, I don't like the idea of giving up my mobility. It makes me feel like a sitting duck. Uh, and lastly, 
really, if you really truly want to better yourself sniping, once you've got the fundamentals down and you've started slowly, start being more aggressive. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Being aggressive will allow you to build skill in movement, situational awareness, quick twitch scenarios, and target acquisition. If you can quickly, uh, quickly acquire a target under duress, acquiring one when undetected, say if you're flanking behind them, will be a breeze. Though ironically enough, sometimes a lot of the time when I get behind enemy lines and I'm next to two or three guys that don't even know I'm there, I'll sometimes panic and miss all my shots. Uh, I have to sort of sometimes be under duress to maintain my accuracy. But being aggressive will make you a much better shot over time and it will improve your skill as long as you have the fundamentals down. So start slowly, start back about 50 to 100 meters, get used to the process of target acquisition on moving targets, targets that are shooting at you, targets that don't know you're there, uh, and then slowly ramp up the speed at which you're doing it and the closeness of range of which you're doing it. it uh, and the thing is though too, you will struggle at first, I promise. You'll be tempted to stop because it'll reflect in your stats, your KD will plummet. But if you truly want to build skill, throw your stats out the window and practice. As you build your skill, your stats will rebound. Reckless aggression helps no one though, so again, make sure you have your fundamentals of target acquisition uh, and knowing estimated ranges of what will be a chest and a headshot and knowing your weapon. Each weapon has that one hit kill uh, range, so like if you're using the SMLE Marksman, uh, I think it's 40 to 80 meters. Try and stay in 40 to 80 meters. Know your weapon. Uh, so I'll, I do plan on making a separate aggressive sniping video for you to watch in the future, so have a look at that too. And that's it. Lastly, as you probably predicted, practice as much as you can. If you struggle early, it's fine. Everybody did when they were learning. It's a decent learning curve especially if you're playing a more aggressive style of sniping. So like I said before, start slow, get the basics down, pick a weapon and scope your scope you're comfortable with, and once you have the basics down, uh, change to a new weapon and see if it's better for you. Uh, you might like the new weapon better than the older one, or you might not. Go back to the one that works with you. It's not a race, it's a journey. If you, feel, if, if you feel this video helped you out, leave a like, uh, consider subscribing, share it on social media, Reddit, wherever you feel it will help someone out. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.